known for its rich commercial and cultural heritage, India has been home to some of the oldest civilizations in the world, such as the Indus Valley Civilization. The last five decades have seen India evolving from its culturally rich image to one of the fastest growing economies of the world. The country has shown substantial development in the agricultural, industrial and technological sectors. In addition to this, India has also contributed significantly to world history. From the ancient times of the Indus Valley Civilization, through the British rule, to free India, the country has witnessed it all. Let's learn a little more about this country that is emerging as a fascinating blend of culture and technology. We'll start by locating India on the world map. As you can see, India spreads across both the eastern and the northern hemispheres. India's latitudinal stretch is between 8.4 degrees north and 37.6 degrees north. And the longitudinal stretch is between 68.7 degrees east and 97.25 degrees east. A study of the map shows that the Tropic of Cancer at 23.30 degree north latitude cuts across the country, dividing it almost into two equal halves. Did you know the Tropic of Cancer is the northernmost latitude at which the sun can appear directly overhead at noon? Coming down, beyond the mainland, the country extends further to the south. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are the extensions of India in the southeast and the Lakshadweep Islands in the southwest. So, you see, that India is a big country. But exactly how big? What is the country's area? The total area of the Indian land mass is 3.28 million square kilometers. This accounts for nearly 2.4% of the total land area of the world. If you compare India's size to that of other countries, India is the seventh largest country in the world. Now, let's focus on the outline of the country in the map. Let's see if you can make out the natural features bordering the country. As you can see, young fold mountains cover the northwestern, northern and northeastern borders of the country. The total land boundary of India measures 15,200 kilometers. Starting from 22 degrees north latitude, down towards the south, India is bordered by the Bay of Bengal in the east, the Arabian Sea in the west, and the Indian Ocean in the south. In fact, the tapered shape of southern India divides Indian Ocean into the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. India's total coastline, including the outlines of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands, measures 7,516.6 kilometers. Did you know? The southernmost tip of India, called the Indira Point, got submerged under the sea in the tsunami that struck the country in December 2004. Now looking at the map, can you identify which extent is larger? The east-west stretch or the north-south stretch? The east-west stretch of India 
looks smaller than the north-south stretch. However, if you actually measure the distance, both measure the same, approximately 3000 kilometers. It is this huge distance of 3000 kilometers that causes a lag between the local times at the eastern and the western ends of the country. Let's discuss a scenario to understand the concept of time lag. It is 6 p.m. in the evening in Gujarat, where you live. Suppose you are talking to a friend in Arunachal Pradesh. Your friend mentions that he is standing at the window, watching a beautiful sunset. However, if you look around you, it is still broad daylight for you. How is it that it's still daylight in your city? While the sun has already set where your friend lives in Arunachal Pradesh. This happens because of the huge longitudinal expanse of the country. There is a huge distance between the eastern and western end points of the country. This leads to a time lag of two hours between the local times of the two places. However, in practice, the clocks in both locations will show the same time. Because the entire country follows a standard time. India's standard time is the time along longitude 82.30 degree east. This longitude passes through Mirzapur in Uttar Pradesh. This longitude is referred to as the standard meridian of India. While India's longitudinal stretch gives rise to a time lag between the east and the west, its latitudinal stretch influences the duration of days and nights. For example, the duration of days and nights is the same in Kanyakumari, which is on the southernmost tip of India. However, as you move northwards, the duration of days and nights begins to vary. In the previous module, you learned about India's size and location on the globe. Now, let's look at India's location in relation to other countries on the map. Can you make out from the map in which part of Asia India is located? As you can see, India lies to the south of Asia and is centrally located between East and West Asia. The Deccan Peninsula in the south of India protrudes to the south, thereby extending the Indian boundary into the Indian Ocean. Thus, India acts as a southward extension of the Asian continent. India is very strategically located in the center. The trans-Indian Ocean routes connect it to Southeast and East Asian countries in the east and to African and European countries in the west. Did you know? The opening of the Suez Canal in Egypt in 1869 has reduced India's distance from Europe by approximately 7,000 kilometers. It connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Indian Ocean. India's long coastline has added to its means of contact with the rest of the world through the sea route. 
In fact, India has a longer coastline than any other country in the Indian Ocean. It is because of India's important position in the Indian Ocean that the ocean is named after India. However, in general, the land routes have been more popular than sea routes and frequented by travellers and traders. In fact, in ancient times, before the sea routes were explored, traders used passes in the mountains to travel in and out of India. Did you know? The Silk Road passing through India is an extensive network of trade routes connecting the East, West and South of Asia to the Mediterranean world, including North Africa and Europe. The Silk Road was a significant factor in the development of great civilizations in China, India, Egypt, Persia, Arabia and Rome. Now let's examine how India's strategic location contributed to its development and enabled it to contribute significantly to the world. Traders have been using both the land and sea routes passing through India to exchange ideas as well as commodities. For example, ancient scholars took ideas from epics like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to the world through these routes. Commodities like spices and muslin were also exported through these routes. Some other significant contributions that India shared with the world through these routes include Stories from the Panchatantra Mathematical basics such as Indian numerals and the decimal system Interestingly, the Western world commonly refers to the Indian numeral system as the Hindu-Arabic numeral system because it reached Europe through the Arabs. The image shows a clock in a park in the Arabic town of Satwa with Indian numerals on its face. Just as these routes helped India to reach out to the world with its ideas and commodities, they also enabled Western influences to reach India. You can see shades of Western influence in Indian architecture. For example, domes, minarets and Mughal tombs of sandstone and marble are all based on Persian designs. This is the Ujjayanta Palace, a former royal palace situated in Agartala, the capital of Tripura. Can you identify which culture the sculpture represents? The sculpture in the Ujjayanta Palace represents Greek influence in India. To conclude, you can see that trade routes through the land and sea played a key role in the intellectual and architectural development of India. And all this was possible only because of India's strategic location on the map. Before independence, 
India had primarily two types of states, provinces and princely states. While provinces were directly ruled by British officials appointed by the Viceroy, the princely states were ruled by local rulers who inherited the states from their forefathers. However, post-independence, these princely states were merged with the Indian Union. And later on, the country went through several reorganizations under the State Reorganization Act. The present-day India has 28 states. and seven union territories. As you can see, the southern half of India has a huge coastline stretching from the west to the east. If you examine the coastline, the coastal states of India are Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and West Bengal. In addition to these states, the coastline is shared by the Union territories of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Daman and Diu, the Lakshwadeep Islands, Puducherry. Among these coastal states, you will also find the smallest state of India, area-wise. Can you identify this state? It's Goa, with an area of 3,702 square kilometers. Conversely, Rajasthan is the largest state, at measuring 342,269 square kilometers. Rajasthan shares its western border with Pakistan, which has its capital at Islamabad. The other Indian states that share a common border with Pakistan in the west are Gujarat, Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. In addition to Pakistan, the state of Jammu and Kashmir shares its northwestern border with Afghanistan too. Afghanistan has its capital in Kabul. Due to its strategic position, Afghanistan has been an ancient focal point for trade and migration between the East and the West. Now let's look around further and identify the other neighboring countries which share common frontiers with India. Let's start with the Northeastern neighbors. China, Nepal, and Bhutan. As you can see, the Chinese border
stretches all the way from the state of Jammu and Kashmir in the north to Arunachal Pradesh in the east, passing along the states of Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, and Sikkim. China is known to be one of the oldest civilizations in the world, with its capital at Beijing. India also shares its northern border with Nepal, which is the world's smallest Hindu state. The capital of Nepal is Kathmandu. Which Indian states share their border with Nepal? The Indian states that share their border with Nepal include Uttaranchal, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and Sikkim. Among these, Sikkim, West Bengal, along with Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, also shares its border with Bhutan. Bhutan has its capital as Thimpu. These were the northeastern neighbors of India. Let's move further east. With which countries does India share its eastern border? India shares its eastern border with Myanmar and Bangladesh. You may remember Myanmar by another name. The earlier name of Myanmar was Burma. Myanmar has its capital at Rangoon. Myanmar shares its border with most of the northeastern states of India. Starting from Arunachal Pradesh to Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, and Tripura. Tripura also shares its border with Bangladesh. In fact, Bangladesh is bordered by India on almost all sides, except in the south. The other Indian states that share a common border with Bangladesh are Meghalaya, West Bengal, and a small part of Assam. Did you know Bangladesh was earlier known as East Pakistan and was part of Pakistan? Only in the year 1971 was it declared an independent country. And came to be known as Bangladesh, meaning the country of Bengalis, because of its large Bengali population. Speaking of population, Bangladesh, with its capital at Dhaka, is one of the most densely populated countries in the world. So you learned about all the neighboring countries that share their borders with India. There are two other neighbors that don't share their borders with India. These are the island countries of Sri Lanka and the Maldives, India's neighbors in the south. If you look at the map closely, you will see that Sri Lanka is separated from India by a narrow channel of sea called the Park Strait. The strait connects the Bay of Bengal in the east to the Gulf of Mannar in the south. The capital of Sri Lanka is Sri Jayawardenapura Kote. However, 
Colombo, the former administrative capital of the country, still is the largest city in the country and is also its commercial capital. Moving east from Sri Lanka, you come to the Maldives Islands, which are to the south of the Lakshwadeep Islands. Maldives is the smallest Asian country, both in area and population, and has its capital at Mali. That was a brief overview of India and its neighboring countries.